like. But this one is fast. This is the only thing where it's good. It's fast. So it's not staying, hopefully, as long uh, as the last time. And Harvey, by the way, Monday, last Monday, it was exactly three years Harvey hit us. So gave us a pause from three years. Nice, right? But we're still alive. You know, my brother said, oh, you have to go out of that. And I said, nope. You know, where you want to go in this time? If you have a RV, yes, you can do, you can go wherever you want. But if you need the next hundred miles up, you will not get any rooms. And with COVID in a shelter, mm -mm. no, so we're staying here. We, I'm optimist, you know. And that too, right? <laughs> you know, I had people who asked us when when Harvey came, you know, they were like, oh, aren't you evacuating? It's like, there's nowhere to go. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, I know people coming out of Beaumont were going Nacogdoches. They were heading up. I, you know, I kind of wonder if anybody went up towards Shreveport, but with looking at the path, I, I mean, either you got to head out towards, you know, more westerly, come towards Dallas, Austin, Amarillo. I mean, this is going to be, it's going to be complicated. And uh, I'm, we're just like, oh, it's going to rain, you know, we'll hang out here, you know, we'll be fine. Yeah. Well, you guys, be sure to let us know if you need anything. That's uh, nice. Thank you for the offer. Well, and, and then obviously after this thing, somebody will need something, right? So this may be an opportunity for us to step up and see what we can put together as far as, you know, I know obviously local Rotary Clubs will be stepping up pretty, and obviously Uta, your, um, your husband's district down there, I'm sure will be doing some stuff. So if there's anything we can help out with, that would be. Last time, that was a good thing. You know, Wayne Bombier, he was speaker a couple of weeks ago in the meeting. Uh, he actually helped a lot with the dehumidifier. Dehumidifier, that's what I learned in the last storm because I never can say it. I couldn't say dehumidifier, you know, no, I can't <laughs> say it. So, and he came up with this big ones and helped a lot of families and, you know, ripped all the wet stuff out. So they did a great job with a lot of more Rotarians. So, but I hope this time it will not be that bad. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. One of my friends is uh, news director of the iHeart Radio cluster in Beaumont, which is mm -hmm. east of Houston and west of uh, Lake Charles. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just posted a little while ago that they are staying, even though they're expecting that uh, storm surge in Beaumont. And yeah. he just got back in his house that got flooded from the last hurricane. Yeah. And uh, they, they, they're hoping they'll be safe at the radio station studios, which are on the second floor, but they're expecting a major storm surge in Beaumont, too. And if that yeah. hurricane goes anywhere to the west, you know, Beaumont, Port Arthur, Orange, they're gone. Yes, exactly. And, and especially Beaumont, and it looks like they, because it's so flat, they have not really, you know, uh, water reservoirs. The water can go. This is a big mm -hmm. And so good luck for your friend. I grew up in Orange, which is right on I-10 at the border. And I know Orange. I have home movies um, of Camille in 64. And uh, there was a hurricane in, I think, 57. Uh, the whole town flooded. And apparently, it's those were not the kind of hurricane that they're getting today. Those were like Category 2, Category 3. And uh, I, I fear for orange too. <clears throat> but I hope my hope is because this thing is not constantly staying; it's fast. That it, you know, comes, make whatever it want, and but it's going away. It's not staying that long, and loses power over landfall. Hopefully. Hi, Eric. I, I was just asking around to make sure I didn't miss a meeting where where I knew you from. <laughs> were you were you invited by one of our members? Um, yeah, actually, I had uh, uh, put in an application. Um, my name's actually spelled the Eric's actually spelled E R I Q U E. So 
sometimes people look at it and think it's Enrique, but it's actually Eric. Well, that's what I thought it was when it first popped up. So I'm glad that <laughs> I <I'm> there. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Uh, how did you find out about us? Um, actually, I, I don't know what made me think of it, but I was, I was, I wondered if there was a rotary that was also a group of motorcycle enthusiasts. And that was literally the inquiry I made on Google. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad wow. we popped up. It'd be pretty bad if we didn't pop up. <laughs> were, we the, were we the first choice on Google? I was going to say. Yes, you were. <laughs> Go ahead. How about that? <laughs> where, do you live? where do you live and what do you ride? Um, I live in the Dallas Fort Worth area, uh, Louisville actually, and I ride an MC 750X Honda. Nice. Yep. Cool. We've got three or four people on here from Texas, Eric. Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and John, the guy at the end polio on, just rode through there. Yeah, but he turned around. Normally we want to meet somewhere, but because of the weather situation, I told him not a good area right now. Yeah. No, it is just too hot. Too, too hot right now. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm I actually in Fort Worth, so that's funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And, uh, we rode for International Female Ride Day on Saturday, and... Um, yeah, Saturday morning wasn't so bad because it was overcast, so it kind of kept it under control. The afternoon was brutal, and it was it was the longest 13-mile ride I've had in a very, very long time. But I had about 50 women riders who showed up, so, you know, yay, it was a fantastic day. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's a lot of women on motorcycles, let me tell you, and a lot <laughs> of interesting attitudes. <laughs> 50 is a pretty big ride yeah yeah well luckily um normally every year i will host a ride and um when this event actually was supposed to take place in may and they canceled the international one they moved it to august well we had a little bit of like cabin fever that finally broke and so i hosted a ride on that date and i thought yeah okay we'll see how many people showed up i had over 30 people show up. I had one guy and like 34 women and we, we had a blast. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was a great ride, but um, it is one of those things. I must say, I wish I could get pictures from the, you know, I'm leading, I'm out front. So there's nobody in front of me. And I look in my mirrors and it's just, you know, a mile plus of riders behind me. It is one of the coolest things that you could possibly see. And um, we went through a couple small towns, and that was kind of interesting because essentially we stopped traffic. Um, but the actual official event this year got moved to August. And because it has been so ghastly hot here, originally we were doing this big ride. We were going to do this overnight. I had a whole, whole plan, and I chucked that out the window and said, we're going to ride into this one um, restaurant bar up here that, it, that I knew would be open. And it had an outdoor area so people could, you know, socially distance and, and feel, you know, feel good coming to the event. I got there and it was starting at 11 o'clock and maybe I ran a few minutes late because, um, yeah, somebody didn't pay attention to her gas gauge getting off the highway. And, um, yeah, so I pull up and there's already like 40 or 50 bikes sitting there. And I'm like, oh, no. I mean, it was, it, it was great. It, it really went well. And a lot of people... Um, Part of what my mission is, is for women to meet other women riders in the area. And so this is a great opportunity. And I get tons of people who come and find me specifically to be like, I am so glad I came today. You know, I met people who live in my neighborhood, who live in my town, and now I've got new people to ride with. So mission accomplished. Yay. <laughs> cool. So are you involved in Rotary already, Eric, or is this a, a new foray for you? No, this is like new for me all around. Cool. So what, what was, what was the driving factor of, I wonder if there's a rotary club, wonder if there's a rotary club first. Right. right. <laughs> that was the first part. So why, why rotary? Well, so I grew up in um, upstate New York and um, we had uh, in a rural area and we had a rotary club in that area, Kendall, 
out towards Kendall, New York, um, little town. But, um, you know, they, they were just always, always doing like a lot in the community and things. And um, so I moved from uh, New York to Florida um, a couple of years ago. And I was hired by, uh, got a job at uh, CCS Medical. And long story short, they ended up transferring me out here to, to start their call center out in this location at corporate. And um, so the one thing I felt in Florida when I lived in the Clearwater area was that, like, I love the weather much more than upstate New York. <laughs> um, I wasn't getting stuck in snow banks or anything like that. But I felt like it was, it was, very, it was very different. Um, it, it was besides being touristy and like, it just seemed like people came and went a lot. There, there wasn't much of a sense of community as, as I was used to having in upstate New York. So when I transferred out here to Texas, I felt like um, other than the fact that I landed five minutes before the pandemic hit, um, I felt like this was the best of both worlds here. I felt like I, I kind of had uh, better, we the better weather than I had in New York, um, but there was much more of a, a sense of feeling of community here. And it was just something where I felt like I wanted to be uh, more a part of that. And um, around the same time, I, you know, I recently got uh, my, my motorcycle that I have now. Um, I've been riding since two, 2012, yeah. I guess it was. Um, but um, I, had, I had stopped for a while, so I had just gotten a bike. And I don't know what it was. It was just one night I was thinking to myself, that would be cool to be involved in rotary. So I started looking at rotary. But because my bike's been on my mind a lot since I've been riding a lot, I thought, I wonder, you know, I just threw out that that chance google <laughs> sure enough hey sure. <laughs> that's perfect man what a great <laughs> story i wish it, i'm recording this i'm gonna use it for later <laughs> this is awesome like, who would have thought eric, that, it you know, is get eric it thing. is extremely unique to have a a rotary club like this online that's focused on something like this not focused but has a a central uh theme like this there's only two other or three other clubs in the world that are similar uh, there's a bicycle club in Japan. There's an RV club that encompasses all of Australia. And then there's a, a flying club that's out in uh, uh, East or Western Europe. Oh, wow. uh, so it's fairly unique concept. And uh, actually I'm being invited here to speak in the next week or two uh, for a district, I think in Tennessee that are considering starting a golf rotary club. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> and yeah. it's kind of cool. So we've got members, Eric, literally all across the U.S. and Canada. Um, and we've got one member and, in Mexico City and one in Guatemala. So we are wow. literally all over the place, which is so cool. That's why, you know, we're talking. So I'm in the Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. Uh, John Cram lives in Pennsylvania. Jim Dodneed is down in Southern uh, Tidewater area of Virginia. Let's see, Chris Jones. I don't actually, Chris, where do you live? In Concord, North Carolina, outside of Charlotte. That. That's right. I knew that. I mean, so we're we're literally everywhere. Linda, who's not on tonight, is up on the uh, with, uh, the Washington State Canadian border. We have uh, a, an associate member who's supposed to be inducting tonight, but he's not here. Who lives in Nova Scotia, right? Oh wow! Literally all over the place, which makes it a really cool club where you know, most of the time the clubs are focused on a certain area in a community and we have this really awesome outreach across so much. We have so many opportunities to reach out to a number of communities. So awesome that you found us. That's very cool. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of like one of those ones I can't, can't remember my exact thought or feeling at the time. I'm sure it was something like, well, I'm probably not going to find anything like this, but let's give it a shot, you know, yeah. <laughs> and sure enough, you know, it existed. And I just thought that was so cool, you know, having that, that common theme, you know, um, in addition to, you know, being a part of the Rotary. And uh, I was just like really psyched to find it. Yeah, Eric, yeah, your story is no, a lot like mine. That's part of why I joined too. That's cool. Now here's a serious question for you. Have you become a Cowboys fan? <laughs> uh, um, not yet. Oh, right. <laughs> Don't don't feel the need. Remember, I only root for two teams, the Denver Broncos and whoever's playing Dallas. 
<laughs> yeah, so yeah. Uh, me and my brothers, uh, my youngest brother has always been a Cowboys fan, which makes it that much more difficult to to make the switch, you know, because you've got that sibling, uh, you know, rivalry and stuff between your teams and so forth. So I'd have to, I'd have to join the dark side there. I'm not sure if I'm ready to <laughs> make that switch to my brother's team yet. <laughs> Well, here's a question you'll need to know the answer to. If there are four Dallas football players in a car, who's driving? I don't know. The arresting officer. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that one coming. All right, now I got to tell my brother that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, so that's just our club, and then uh, Rotary has a bunch of international fellowships as well, and we have. Uh, Jerry Michigan Gold Wing there, who is actually the president of the International Fellowship of Motorcycle Engineering. There's also an international fellowship that you could join, and I think that's what Scott was talking about. He's part of the IFMR. Yeah. I think actually, we are all part of the IFMR, um, so it gives us an international reach. So we've we've talked to a bunch of people and trying to set up rides in Germany and France. Oh wow, that was fantastic! Terry, Terry, I was over on a business trip, just hooked up with them. It's like, yeah, I get to go ride with these guys. Eric, our club as a benefit actually automatically joins all of our members to IFMR. So you'll be part of both. Oh, that's great. Yep. And you said that you did turn in an application, right? I think Linda yes, had emailed me. Yep. This is a cool kind of story about the connection between the, the, the rotary and motorcycling too. this guy here. We just got this up the AeroStitch catalog, but uh, it was part of my inspiration for joining, honestly. Oh, cool. Let's take a screenshot of that. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. I'll put the uh, I'll put the link in um, in the chat as well. Thank you. He was actually one of our speakers. He came in and talked to us. It was really cool. I think he's a member. Got mail. Is he an associate <laughs> member, right? Yeah. Uh, I yes, think so. he is. He's a member yeah. of IFMR anyway. Yep. Yeah. So and Eric, I've, we are I've actually sorry. written with Bob several times, actually. Yeah, I got to ride with him last, uh, what, a couple of years ago for his end polio ride out of uh, near Sacramento. I live in the Bay Area, and so fortunate to be close enough to him that that was pretty easy to get to. He came to our district conference in North Carolina a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Quite a ride. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. and when, um, when we said he's an associate member, Eric, we have, um, we have essentially honorary members who are members of brick and mortar rotary clubs throughout the U.S. and everywhere throughout the U.S. and Canada. And mm -hmm. you can join as an associate member where you still remain a member of your brick and mortar club, but you're also an associate member of our club. So you kind of yeah. stay in the loop, which is, which is very cool. We're almost half and half. And last I checked, we were almost exactly 25 and 25 associate and uh, in full members. Oh, that's cool. Now, so so if you're like brick and mortar member, you could be associated in this club. Does it work the other direction as well? Like if you were a member of this club and you wanted to also join a brick and mortar, would you be an associate of theirs or would you then become associated to this? How would that work? That's a unique thing in our club that we've been experimenting with. And, and uh, there's some clubs that are interested in doing similar things, but there's nothing official out there for that. We've We've made it work. So, yeah. Yeah. And, we, and we've had full support of some of the staff at RI in doing it. So yep. Rotary yes. International is, is it, it changes all the time. It's, it tries to stay current all the time. Every three years it re-meets re and, and um, reestablishes some of the, the rules. And the cool thing about Rotary is there's no Rotary cops. So <laughs> if it makes sense, and if it makes sense in particular for one club such as ours, it does. When we established this club, we, we, we had a number of people that were, didn't have the uh, opportunity to do rotary in the quote-unquote traditional sense. And, and then we've had, we, when we were putting the club together, we didn't really think it would be fair to, because it is a great novel idea to steal members from other clubs. So we put together this associate thing to, to make it work for everybody. So, and, and it has worked for us very well. Well, I think since we're, we're a, a motorcycle rotary club, we should call, we shouldn't say steal members. We should tell, say we're patching them over. <laughs> <laughs> And we have patches, so that works quite well. 
Perfect. <laughs> Eric, what's your last name? Fabulous. F is in Frank, A, B is in boy. U L E U X. Oh, I spelled it right. Oh. Amanda's bilingual. She's got this under control. No, I'm trilingual. I try to speak a bunch of different languages. Okay, there you, there you go. go. I thought it was <laughs> trilingual, Terry. <laughs> yeah, I try all the time to speak English. <laughs> I have my favorite answer when people are like, ooh, you speak Arabic? Why did you learn Arabic? I'm like, well, because if I say something stupid in Arabic, people go, wow, you speak Arabic? And if I say something stupid in English, I just say something stupid. <laughs> There you go. That's a good way to look at it. Eric, I am like trying to totally figure out what's going on in your background photo. Oh, so it's um, here in Texas, there's this place called uh, Strokers. I, it's, uh, I, I was thinking top. it was Rick Fairless. Yeah, because I'm in the sure face is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I, just, I'm right outside of Houston. So we come up that way. So we'll have to get together. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was, I was at his, uh, at his place last week and I mean, he's just such an artist with those bikes, and I was just taking pictures, and, and I thought, well, here's a nice backdrop for our meeting today. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Actually, I tell, I, I tell people that if I win the lottery, I'm getting a Rick Fairless paint job because, Absolutely. oh my God, they blow me away. <laughs> <laughs> he's so talented. <clears throat> He is so talented. Actually, he is, uh, you know, if you want to talk about a business owner, you know, you're, you're on his property. I've watched that man pick up trash. I mean, yep. serious. He's walking around. I mean, he is so into his business that he is not above really caring for his property. I mean, just it it blew me away because I've met other builders that you know they're like, oh, I'm not going to talk. You know, I'm not going to talk to those those people over there. He comes out, he hangs out with you, talks. I mean, absolutely, yeah. He's like a local celebrity around here, but he's like completely down to earth. Yeah. They have a uh, they have a, uh, a, a place in Irving called Big State uh, uh, Drugstore that they bought after it completely closed down and they turned it into a, a you know basically a 50 style restaurant. And first time I went in there, he and his wife were both behind the grill. Wow, yeah, it sounds like him. You know, he's just really that kind of guy. Business, you can be sure when you get in that the quality is always high because uh, the owner taking care of that for themselves. You know, that's always a big difference. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Wait, 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 Terry Moore, you can't show up late to my meeting and say, Sorry, I'm late. I was doing shots with my neighbor. <laughs> he just did. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I agree you weren't on before, Terry. Check it out, baby. <laughs> Industrial strength. Industrial strength. <laughs> oh, John is ready with his dinner, right? Oh, Eric, uh, Terry is also one of those presidents of uh, fellowship. He leads the uh, fellowship of uh, uh, whiskey drinkers. Nice. Oh. I might have to become part of that, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We also have members of the uh, brew, which is the beer drinking uh, fellowship. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, there's all kinds of funky fellowships, man. If you think of it, there's probably, if you were to Google something you're interested in and Rotary, yeah. there's a good chance it's going to pop up. Anybody here belong to the surfing fellowship? The what? I, I'm a good friend with the guy because he's, he's connected to the East Coast versus the West Coast. He, they surf here in, in South Carolina. So I'm a good friend with him. I'm not a surfer, but I get his newsletter every month. He outshines me in writing newsletters. I'll tell you that. Oh, he's good at newsletters. Yeah. How many people joined the heavy metal fellowship? I did. Everybody in Germany. You really, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> it's great stuff. I, I oh, first saw that in, that in Hamburg. <laughs> Nightwish. I've been watching Nightwish. Like you learn new things about everybody in these, uh, in these. <laughs> these. <laughs> oh, I want to try something for the next one. I'm going to run it by you guys. So we can, um, on Zoom, and I haven't played with it yet, yet you can do breakout rooms. Yep. Right? Randomly say, hey, put the, put random four people in a breakout room. And I was thinking for the next happy hour meeting, it'd be kind of fun to do a, 
break out for you know five seven minutes learn something new about everybody come back in and talk for a bit and see what we can mostly i just want to play with the break because i have the controls <laughs> eric you understand that being the fourth wednesday of the month this is our happy hour meeting we don't have a program we just drink <laughs> all right that's good because i did i did see it said bring you know, you know have your beverage so i grabbed uh a loco here. I can't there's a, there's a fair there's a fair amount of us that'll drink anyway. Do we come to the meeting? Yeah, you guys catch me at the end of the day. I'm drinking. <clears throat> so did you just say you grabbed a four loco? Because we can't see the bottle when you hold it up. Yeah. Nice. Yep, got a couple see, of those. It's being censored out because we do not approve. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 listen, it was the last bit of purchase. <laughs> What is yeah. everybody drinking? I'm 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 doing some cheap Bordeaux. Ooh. There you go. Bordeaux's good. I got my usual Muddy so Blairies. <laughs> Me too. <All> right. <laughs> now I will say that's the one thing that's kind of nice put me thing. out of place wow. between New York, <laughs> Florida, and Texas. Is drinking that, for a loco? <laughs> no, not for a loco. <laughs> um, being up in New York, when it came to beers, I was always, um, you know, into like the darker beers and stuff, and especially you know with fall and winter and all that. The heavier so I went to Florida, and a lot of that was harder to find. And in Texas, it's I wouldn't say it's as hard to find as in Florida, but um, there they seem they seem to like uh, the IPAs a lot more, which you know I'm a fan of any any good beer. But I kind of prefer like the dark and tans. The hey, Amanda. Yes, sir. You know what might be fun in one of these upcoming uh, happy hour meetings is that we have everybody at the start of the meeting introduce their drink. <laughs> By name. Or whatever. It'd be, it'd be hilarious. Is this Fernando? I no, I'd have to come up with that. <laughs> Fernando. I, I know now it can't be for local. No, no, it totally can. You, you gotta, you gotta have somebody to brag on, Eric. <laughs> I think making everybody a drink. I think what we should do is one of the next happy hours. Everybody should bring something they wouldn't normally drink. Mm. Milk. Stop being a snob. Absolute. I've had some good tequila lately, so that's something I wouldn't normally drink, but I'll bring it. <laughs> Oh, that's such a horrible drink. drink. So peppermint schnapps in college, I won't ever touch it. Oh. I suppose I could. <laughs> I suppose I could. <laughs> I can't do whiskey. I, take, I just take can't. one for the team. Peppermint schnapps. Uh, anybody I'm remember the drinking? Anybody remember the beer out of? Um, I think it's the bottom of the Coors barrel called Blatz. <laughs> yes. That happened in college forty some years ago. Never again. Never again. <laughs> Too much. It was too much at this time, right? <laughs> it was like um, I want to. I want to say it was like four dollars a case of beer, like twenty-four twelve-ounce beers. I want to say that light ice. ice. <laughs> that sounds an awful lot like the old red, white, and blue we used to drink. <laughs> we used to get some stuff back in college. It was like twenty-five cents a bottle for a case, and it was out of Wisconsin somewhere. <laughs> Wisconsin's got some good stuff. They got things that you have to go there to get because they won't sell it outside the state. It was probably cheesy beer, right? I don't know. It's, we, you know, Lining Kugels, uh, they had their Bach. And you could tell Lining Kugel Bach season by the way the couch smelled in the TV room at my fraternity house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm get up food. into. You get up into some of the uh, little towns up in the northeast part of California. Uh, like Alturas, and you uh, you find places that still have hams and Pat's Blue Ribbon on tap in their in their diners. That stuff is all coming Twin back. City, so yeah. It's all it's all popular again. I'm on a drink Northern Virginia a drink Nova site on Facebook, and everybody's like, "Has anybody tried those hams?" And I was like, "What? <laughs> <Why>? No." <laughs> like, what what was the news? What was the infamous oh. malt? Liquor, beer from back in the day. Colt 45. Colt 45. Colt 45. When I, when I turned uh, 21, I was, I was in, um, uh, at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, and um, uh, 
advanced individual training AIT. And I was on, on the club and um, it was a dollar for a picture of, of that stuff. Wow. And so, yeah. 3.2? Actually, it wasn't even a dollar. It was 99 cents and there was no tax because you were on base. So it was 99 cents for an entire picture of that stuff. And um, it led to one of the crazier nights that, uh, that I've ever had for sure. <laughs> yeah, I had a similar. Oh, that way that, yeah. MPs don't have to find you in town. Just like pass out on boats. Yeah. <laughs> well, I walked it once. I, it was me and and my buddy, and after a, a bunch of uh, shenanigans, we tried making our way back to our um, our barracks and on um, base. All the buildings look exactly the same. Yeah. Um, so we walked into the wrong one, mm -hmm. and uh, we walked into one where the soldiers. Uh, happened to be uh, in trouble that weekend. So they were all on the floor scraping the grout and stuff on the floor. And we walk in and we're just like looking around, you know, kind of two sheets to the wind. And we look up and we see the drill sergeant in his office. <laughs> and we just ran down the hallway, dove through the bushes, and then ran to our uh, barracks before we could get caught. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Was your I've never done anything like that. What's that, that now? <laughs> That was Fort, Fort, Fort Lost in the Woods. Fort Misery. Lost in the Woods, you know it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been there. Yeah. What did you That's do in the Army? Yeah. Uh, I was in the Corps of Engineers, 62 Echo, heavy construction equipment operator. Cool. But honestly, yeah. if, if you guys like good beer, I cannot understand that you can drink American beer. Oh, those are fighting words. <laughs> Ouch. I think you're legally obligated to say that coming from Germany, though, aren't you? <laughs> it's actually in her passport. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's passed. One of the things I like. Actually, go ahead. Ute, my favorite of all time is Meyerbrock. So. Meyerbrock. It's a yep. dark beer. Yep. Mm hmm. But th this is the same like here, you know, when you go in the in the smaller breweries, this is so much more. Here here we have in Houston, we have quite a few. I was in two once. And what I not like is that they mix the beer with something. We have that too, but the original beer have to be have to have a good taste, you know. So um but I'm not really a, a beer drinker. We have a lot of beer in the area I'm coming from, but we have also a very huge wine area and my thing is more the wine so i like mm. i prefer the white the white and uh, fresh and crispy like a sauvignon blanc uh, or pinot grigio something like that so this is my favorite you need to I, visit john's winery and give a critique i will i will maybe you know because of when i can come to the district up there for some events i hope in my year or before I go and to be the president, you know, maybe I have a chance to come up and can visit you guys and then we can have a good time together, hopefully. <laughs> Ute, are you familiar with the Reinheitsgebot? Of course, it's over 300 years old. And yes, it is. And they finally violated it. The Reinheitsgebot said there's four ingredients in beer, water, yeast, malt, and what, what Hops. Hops. Oh, yeah, hopfen, yeast. hopfen, hopfen. And hops, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and anything other than that, it's not beer. But now they have some flavored <laughs> beers in Germany. Yeah, they mix it. But they have, again, the original beer, and then they mix it with, for example, Sprite. Uh, we call it, uh, when you mix Coca-Cola and beer, it calls dreckiges. It calls it a dirty beer because it looks so dark, <laughs> you know? This is why we call it dreckiges. When you order one, when you want to order one, you say, I want the Dreckiges, and they know what you're talking about. Or with, um, with, uh, lemonade, with uh, yeah, lemonade, with clear lemonade. This is a Radler. This yeah. is a little bit more light, and it's also very... I, Scott is, is shaking his head, or not shaking, he say yes, because I'm sure he was trying when he was in Germany, right? It's nice when you don't want something quite as heavy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like the, the Stiegel, Stiegel. Godler, the great one, is one of my favorites. Yes, yes. Oh, they make I like my martinis very... dirty. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the important thing is the beer is always the same. You know, they, they don't change something on the, recept on the recept too from the beer. They only change 
what they put in top, you know, but what with what they mix with, but they not change the beer uh, in the recipe. This is a big difference than to the American. We was the crossing last time when we go to Bandera, we are crossing uh, Shida beer, right? It's a Texan one as well. And uh, I would look what they brewery says. It's a very uh, little brewery, but it's very popular uh, down here in Houston, this beer, China beer. Actually, Uder, that would be a good ride to write out the Shiner, you know, when we were talking about things for 2022, that would be, that's a beautiful ride. I've done that out on a uh, alternate 90. Mm -hmm. And so we'll just try that in the back of our heads. Mm -hmm. It makes, you know, we can do it. Who is uh, responsible for the fellowship? Terry? No, you are responsible for the whiskey fellowship, uh, fellowship right? <laughs> but we need then the beer fellowship to go with us to China, right? That would be great. <laughs> we have a joint meeting. The beer <laughs> fellowship meets the bike group, and yeah, I mean, that'll work. Oh, what a mess! <laughs> but yeah, but the other thing is, don't drink and drive. Right, that's a destination meeting. Is I was, was going to say bad news. We end up being the designated drivers. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe what we can do, we can make a ride up there. Everybody get from the brewery um, a special bottle or whatever and we can drink it when we can get back you know that's a possibility Ute, have you joined the Ute, have you joined the wine fellowship no hmm. you should. I don't know why nobody asked me about that and i was not thinking don't, about don't waste your time unless you're a wine snob <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> John, they, ex they accept me you know and i'm well, you're not a wine snob, but no, uh, I'm Irish. I drink everything. <laughs> uh, John, are you in it? They took you because they took you because of Jamie Terry. <laughs> I did not join the wine fellowship. Why not? I just said, wine. Wine is to be enjoyed. There's two kinds of wine in the world: yeah, those that you like and those that you don't like. You're right. <laughs> I'm still looking for one I don't like. I was going to say the don't like <laughs> list is pretty short. It's still looking for it's one very one. small. I, yeah, I passed. But when's the last time weekend. you sucked on Mad Dog 2020? <laughs> <laughs> Not since I was stationed in North Carolina in the Marine Corps. <laughs> but considering this year, that that stuff was appropriately named. I will give a shout out for John's Winery. He's got a nice winery. I've been there, and he offers nice wines. Thank you, Chris. Cool. I've uh, been there, too, and his help is pretty good, too, there. We have Don't a, say Ute, but our winemakers from And there also. John has a winery? Yeah. yeah. How come I didn't know that? You're not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I missed a few meetings. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, That's, why I'm called again. That's okay, Terry. John, surprise too. <laughs> you, you know, I told you guys last time something from uh, we was on a mystery event in a winery in Santa Fe, Texas. So that's very close to us. And I was like, really, there's a winery in Texas? Unbelievable. So we was going there. Deb know it. There was a week later or a day later than I there was in this winery. It's a hack winery. It's a small farm, wine farm. But honestly, the wine we tasted and we was really excited. It was not a cheap wine. And my friend and I, we, we like to drink a wine after that together. We was like, oh my gosh, how somebody can pay money for that kind of my wine? I'm sorry to say that. But <laughs> maybe I'm too spoiled, you know, because I'm coming from a wine area. Maybe it's about that. Texas wine kind of has that reputation though, that it's, you know, kind of hit or miss now. You know, we're getting, um, oh, what's the name of the, there's a big one that's out in Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg, exactly. This is what I heard. There is, uh, and a friend from Dallas actually brought me a very good red wine because I'm, I never find a red one what I really liked. It's hard for me to find a red wine. I don't like this very, I don't like the, um, the heavy red wine. You know, I tasted it in South Africa. I was on the 
on the farms over there is beautiful, but red wine is not going to me. And he brought me a bottle from Fredericksburg and that was so delicious, but I don't know what winery it was and what kind of, you know, I need to ask the red wine drinker because I don't like this heavy. I like more the lighter ones, you know, and I couldn't find any anyone. Only this only bottle and he, and now I cannot ask him. He's sick, so he he's not re remember what kind of wine he brought me up over there. So, but it was from Fredericksburg. Hmm. So, guys, what kind of red wine is not that heavy and have not this hard, you know, at the yeah. end? You, you have you like tried a Moscato? <laughs> no. Pinot Noir. Sweet. 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 Or no sweet. Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. what? There's so many differences. What about Sangiovese? Like a Chianti. A Chianti is Pinot awesome. Noir, Merlot, Chianti, yeah. like they all kind of fall in that same. No mode. sweet. It was not sweet. It was fruity, not sweet. but not sweet. Or you can just go with the Jack Daniels and then you're all set. Uh, no. Have you had Mad Dog 2020 before, Lute? What? Have you ever had Mad Dog 2020? <laughs> oh. You should buy some and have it for the next happy hour meeting. You've <laughs> got a bottle of Manischewitz that sits here. Yeah. I'm telling you, I think the next happy hour meeting should be bring something to drink that you would not normally drink. Okay. Well, maybe the Mad Dog 2020, everybody does a tasting of it and gives their impressions. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, uh, I find out funny. there are people they make <laughs> so wine funny. tasting online. There, there are really people they're making wine tasting online. Yeah. I, that, I was trying to figure so out how jump. we could do it. <clears throat> okay, see you later, Scott. Thanks. See you. I was trying to figure out how we could do an online wine tasting. I we thought we can't all get I, the same wines everywhere we are, and I can't. Yeah. Oh, it. we have seven, seven o'clock. Wow, it is seven o'clock. That's not the fact. Amanda, is your uh, husband still work as a as a vin as a he's what a do you call it? Yeah, he's a distributor now, but yeah, so he represents thirty five hundred different wines. So. Oh my gosh! Okay, yeah. you can I don't know. Maybe he knows. Maybe he knows. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, Uta, if you ever want to talk to him about what you might like, we can definitely have that. I would love, we should have him talk. I would, like I said, I would love to figure out a way that we could do a wine tasting, but I can't get everybody the same wine. So we'll see, figure it out. I have a Rotarian friend. She is making wine tastings visual. Maybe, you know. Virtually, that's awesome. Israel, yeah, maybe we can uh, contact her, no problem. Yeah, really fun. He just sits over there playing his dumb video games while we're having our, mini, our meetings. <laughs> I think he'd be an awesome speaker. He is, he is a good speaker. So I, I'll talk to him and see what we can work out. I think for now, before we lose anybody else, it is eight o'clock. Eric, thank you very much for joining us. I'm not shutting the meeting off. If everybody wants to stay on and gab, that's fine. I just would like to end with the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Nobody's raising their hand, so I'll say first. Is, is it, it the first? truth? Second. Is it fair to all concerned? Third. Third. So it'll be beneficial. Will goodwill to and better friendship. Better friendship. Will it be beneficial? Will be beneficial to all concerned? And fifth, will be fun. It's fun. <laughs> so, thank you guys See you very much for joining. See you guys next week. It was nice meeting everybody. Nice to meet you. Look to you. I'm glad you joined us. Come on back next week. Yeah, I'm very good. Thank you. Right. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Uh, stay bye -bye. safe. Let us know if you need anything. Same to you, Deb. Yep. Be safe down there. Now they're going and going and look, you will get bigger in my screen. I know, everybody gets bigger and bigger. I need everybody to get bigger. Uta, Uta what, what is, what is, what's the beer Bitburger? Bit, Bitburger. Bitburger. Bitter and Bit. Bitter and Bit. Yeah, that's a good what's, one too. Uh, is that the name Bit, of the beer? There is, yeah, there is a city when you see Germany and you see West, there's Frankfurt. And very close to the French corner is a is a town it's called Bitburg. And in this town they have a I think the whole uh, a quarter of the town is working in this brewery. It's a very big and famous brewery over there. And they make Bitburger, it's a pilz. It's a pilz. 
pilz beer it's not a weizen beer it's not a you know bock beer they have different kinds of but bit is a very uh, popular brand in germany yes and it's I, a good beer i had a friend of mine a friend of mine introduced me to that years ago and and that's if somebody says German beer, that's all I can say is like, yeah, I've tasted that one. You know, it's good. I like it. My, my favorite, when I drink beer, my favorite is uh, um, Erdinger. Erdinger. It comes from Bavaria. And they have, by the way, my husband like it. My husband is not, he says all the time he's allergic to alcohol. So he's not drinking. But this beer he can drink because it's a non, non-alcoholic beer. And it's a... Uh, uh, really delicious you will like it special wow. you know when you come from a run or you know it okay it have the calories because it have also yeast and topfen and things like that but it have no alcohol or minimal minimal alcohol and especially in the summertime it's really hot it's a very good alternative to drink that instead of real beer because it have a light sweet taste uh but it's really tasty at all. And it's isotonic. It have a lot of minerals inside. Very healthy at all. Uh, no beer you know, tastes better than when you're sitting in the marine plots, drinking it under the... Marine plots. Marine yeah. plots. In Munich. <laughs> yeah. In Munich. And, and each, 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 you know, this, when you go in downtown Germany, in any cities, and you sit there, there is some, some, you know, bars or restaurants or whatever. And if in the summertime, they have the tables outside and it's nothing better than to sit outside, drink something, whatever you like, and look at the people, enjoy yourself. And this is what I miss a little bit in America, to enjoy yourself take the time as a quality time and not only to eat or you know to drink your beer and then go away no make a conversation have fun together it's like more like a celebration this is what i really miss in america so when we're sitting there and even you can see how people eating if they are fast eating they're not really enjoying what they're eating <laughs> right because Amanda, we did a we did a uh a sea wrap presentation of a beer judge that's in the brew fellowship and and um he'd be a good one to have as a speaker in the club yeah that'd be fun absolutely if you if you happen to know him if you want to reach out all of we we're looking at um basically december on we've got openings for speakers for sure okay. i'll reach out to him he'd, he'd be a fun one he's a good guy i think jerry knows him you know just but i know terry in from our district you have a lot of members right it's bill Pico, you know bill Pico. Mm -hmm. he's an ifmr member as well then you have um uh, uh, wayne Bomier is also a follow of the whiskey fellowship right yeah we have a couple of from the houston from our district but it's uh, in your fellowship yeah what what we need what we need as a judge from a t or excuse me a speaker from texas mm -hmm. is like a mesquite barbecue judge that would be awesome okay did you talk with that good night good night david hi david i mean i'm sure we can find please send me the gotta go too guys yeah jerry thank you all right uh, jerry i'll talk to you soon you need to um, tell me i'm sure we can find one but you know like a um, you know, Texas has their own barbecue kind of industry mm -hmm. and to do a, a mesquite, you know, barbecue judging kind of thing. And you I feel like that's something we need to do in person. I want barbecue. Oh, sure. But, you know. <laughs> but can you send me something like that? And, and I can ask some people from the district and I'm sure we can find somebody. Send, send me only a text. Do you have my phone number? that you can send me a text message, whatever you want. I can get that, I can get that from the, the database. Love yeah. Yep, in there. Yeah, send it over, please, and then I will look what I can do, no problem. Thank you, thank you, man. I, I think that would be a great one to, because, I mean, we're coming up, you know, after Taipei, we're in Houston, or Dallas, one of the two. In there. Houston, please. Okay, Houston. I'm working on that right now. Okay, good. <laughs> I've, I've been to Houston. Houston is, like you take you five hours to drive across the city. Mm -hmm. I, I've been there, you know, mm -hmm. but um, the motorcycling fellowship really needs to have a big presence in Houston. It really does. Yeah, for sure. That's, yeah. 
Which is yeah. a big strategic push for her yeah. year. Is yeah. to and with the other thing, what is, uh, I just find out some hotels, Amanda, and we have to think about it. I asked some people, you know, oh, hi, hi, Keith, welcome back. <laughs> Uh, I asked some, um, some, you know, when we was in Hamburg, there was a German district. They helped us with uh, reservation for the hotel rooms. Right, right. What I would like to do is um, I, I made a list with hotels. You know, they are out of the rotary uh, because they already um, made contracts with hotels. They're already locked in, yeah. Because I know that because Chris is in the HO. Uh, C meeting all the time, you know, so I find out some hotels I want to visit and I want to look, you know, they are really good for, for example, a motorcycle group or not. And then I need to know how many people want from us and from the fellowship want to come to Houston because then I can make a, a, a reservation for this time that we can all stay together. You know, I will host somebody and I'm sure, you know, some of the IFMR members from the Houston Rotary District would do that too, but we are all involved in this thing when the convention comes up. So I'm, I'm sure they have not that time to, right. you know, really make something with the people. And then I think it's easier to stay together in one hotel and, you know, go out and eat something. So this is why I look that I plan it in, a, in an area where the people not have to drive. They only step out, go in the next uh, right. area to eat something or whatever. This is not that easy in Houston. So to find something and it's not a high pricing hotel. It's a more, it's a nice hotel, but it's not, it's a more familiar one. I think that would be nicer. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, because I'm with the Whiskey Fellowship, I mean, that's my number one priority. So mm -hmm. I've got to stay very, very close. I mean, we have to arrive at the International like two days before and and set up and that sort of thing. But um, any help that you could give us as mm -hmm. far as like a, a bar or restaurant to go to yes. for, you know, I, a whiskey tasting, a whiskey dinner. We'd appreciate that too. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not familiar with that, but I can give you. I know there's one guy. What's his name? Uh, he's also in your fellowship, and he can. Oh, Bill Palco is also a good one for that. That you really talk with the people of there because they are not involved in the in the convention thing. They are only, you know, in the right. in the normal like a normal thing for the club. And they uh, ask them from the fellowship completely. I can ask them too, but, you know, it's easier for you to write them from the fellowship and ask them and say, hey, we want to go to the convention. Where's the pl best place to stay? I can do it. This is what I try to do. I want to do it for the motorcycle people because right. even if they have no motorcycle, because I, I want to speak with, and that will help me with that, um, with some motorcycle dealer to get a special deal for the people they're coming in on the convention for a motorcycle, you know, when they rent motorcycles, so we can make a tour together or whatever. Right, or right. Maybe they will make a motorcycle on the booth that they, you know, I'm, I'm open for everything, but uh, this is what I'm starting right now to do because now is the time to do it. You know, Taipei, maybe we will have Taipei, but maybe not because of the China thing. In China, what's going on with China and Taiwan right now? The yeah, we, we've situation. already decided we're not we're not going to Taipei. We're not I mean, going. We, we, we'll try to have a fellowship booth there, but yeah, you know, physically, me and the four, the half a dozen, you know, members aren't mm -hmm. administrators aren't going to Taipei. Yeah, and it's uh, and and then I'm sure that uh, Houston, you know, in Hamburg there was twenty six thousand Rotarians in Hamburg and because we had not Hawaii and Taipei is also not that easy to go I think in Houston it will be incredible going on oh absolutely this is what we're thinking because it's the first one in in the United States again and hopefully we don't have this corona stuff going on anymore right right yeah we'll be right. okay well I love you girls Awesome, <laughs> awesome job tonight. <laughs> All right.
You be safe and make sure you get home safe, Terry, from your kitchen table to where I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> My wife's not home yet, but yeah, it's okay. You know. She would find you. <laughs> She's got the golf cart. She knows where to go. Travel across the street and go grab her. All right. With us, stay safe. Don't don't hurt. Don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything. So we will see. It looks it looks darker, but it looks right now it's the quiet for the storm right now. Be waiting for that. So bye, guys. Be careful. Bye. Bye.